Progress of Cozy T. Gray, a Pandaric poem. This could also be called the progress of poetry. There is a beautiful progression in the development of music and also verse. From birth until death, there are stories that have been told and repeated with the help of music and the poetic muse. We are given the picture of a child, for example Shakespeare, being placed in the arms of the muse, who helps him become the great author that he is. The power of the pen and the music can take us below the good, but also far above the great. The Progress of Poesy Awake, a Golian liar, awake, and give to rapture all thy trembling strings. From Helicon's harmonious springs, a thousand rills their mazy progress take. The laughing flowers that round them blow, drink life and fragrance as they flow. Now the rich stream of music winds along, deep, majestic, smooth, and strong. Through verdant vales and Ceres' golden rain, now rolling down the steep amain, headlong, impetuous, see it pour, the rocks and nodding groves rebellow to the roar. O sovereign of the willing soul, parent of sweet and solemn breathing airs, enchanting shell the sullen cares and frantic passions hear thy soft control. On Thracia's hills the lord of war has curbed the fury of his car. and dropped his thirsty lance at thy command, perching on the sceptered hand of Joel, thy magic lulls the feathered king with ruffled plumes and flagging wing, quenched in dark clouds of slumber lie the terror of his beak and lightnings of his eye. Thee, the voice, the dance obey, tempered to thy warble play, or Idalia's velvet green, the rosy crown of love are seen on Cythera's day. With antic sports and blue-eyed pleasures, frisking light in frolic measures, now pursuing, now retreating, now encircling troops they meet, to brisk notes in cadence beating, glance their many twinkling feet. Slow melting streams their queen's approach declare, where'er she turns the graces homage pay, with arms sublime that float upon the air. In gliding state she wins her easy way, o'er her warm cheek and rising bosom move the bloom of young desire and purple light of love. Man's feeble race, what ills await? Labor and penury, the racks of pain, disease and sorrows weeping train, and death, sad refuge from the storms of fate, the fond complaint my song disprove and justify the laws of Jove. Say, has he given in vain the heavenly muse? Night and all her sickly dews, her spectres wing, and birds of boding cry, he gives to range the dreary sky. Till down the eastern cliffs the far, Hyperion's march they spy, and glittering shafts of war. In climbs beyond the solar road, where shaggy forms o'er ice built mountains roam. The muse has broke the twilight gloom to cheer the shivering maid of dull abode, and oft beneath the odorous shade of Chile's balbus forest slain, she deigns to hear the savage youth repeat in loose numbers wildly sweet their feathers sink to chiefs and dusky loves. Her track, where'er the goddess roves, glory pursue and generous shame, the unconquerable mind and freedom's holy flame. Woods that wave o'er Delphi's steep isles that crown the Aegean deep, fields that cool Elissa slabs, or where meanders amber waves in lingering labyrinths creep. How do your tuneful echoes languish, mute to the voice of anguish, where each old poetic mountain inspiration breathed around? Every shade and hallowed fountain murmured deep a solemn sound. Till the sad nine, in Greece's evil hour, left their pardon, Essus, for the Latian plains. Alike they scorn the pomp of tyrant power, and coward vice, 
that revels in her chains. When Latium had her lofty spirit lost, they sought, O Albion, next thy sea-encircled coast. Far from the sun and summer gale, in thy green lap was nature's darling laid. What time where lucid Avon strayed, to him the mighty mother did unveil her awful face. The dauntless child stretched forth his little arms and smiled. This pencil take, she said, whose colors clear richly paint the vernal year. Find too these golden keys, immortal boy. This can unlock the gates of joy, of horror that, and thrilling fears, or ope the sacred source of sympathetic tears. Nor second he that rode sublime upon the seraph wings of ecstasy, the secrets of the abyss to spy. He passed the flaming bounds of place and time, the living throne, the sapphire blaze, where angels tremble while they gaze. He saw, but blasted with excess of light, closed his eyes in endless night. Behold, where Dryden's less presumptuous ear, wide o'er the fields of glory bear, two coursers of ethereal race, with necks and thunder clothed, and long resounding face. Hark, his hands the lyre explore, bright-eyed fancy hovering o'er, scatters from her pictured urn thoughts that breathe and words that burn. But ah, tis heard no more. O liar divine, what daring spirit wakes thee now? Though he inherit nor the pride nor ample pinion that the Theban eagle bear, sailing with supreme dominion through the azure deep of air, yet oft before his infant eyes would run such forms as glitter in the muse's ray, with orient hues unborrowed of the sun. Yet shall he mount and keep his distant way beyond the limits of a vulgar fate, beneath the good how far.